Hey everyone, welcome to Dave's Bonsai. On today's episode, the common nine bark. So today we're going to repot this uh, common nine bark and uh, I love this tree uh, out of the nursery, just a common nine bark out of a upper midwest nursery. I live in Minnesota and uh, this bark in this, this tree trunk just uh, it just sold me on it. Uh, for one it, it has such great girth already, it's very nice and thick. Um, the bark has a almost like a, a birch tree paper like feeling to it. On the outside here which uh, I believe will peel off. I don't know if it peels off every season um, or if it peels off as it just gets to a certain age. I'm not that familiar with the uh, nine bark to know all the details but I just fell in love with it. It has this little groove in here like it was kind of split at one time and it's just slowly been healing over the years so um, though that's an imperfection it's something that just caught my eye too and I think I like the way it kind of just uh, it's healing over itself and uh, surviving. So that's, that's kind of interesting. So as you can see, uh, I just took it out of my uh, cold frame. Uh, this is April the 7th. Hey, let's go show you what it's like outside on April 7th in Minnesota, 2018. All right, so as I said, April the 7th, 2018. And it looks like this. Yeah, it's been a pretty tough winter. So typically in Minnesota, we're going to be taking out our bonsais around this time, some of them. It's going to be a waterfall. My pond's all frozen up. Here we got a few Beartooth Mountain uh, evergreens. Uh, going to see if some of those come back. Uh, so those are out on the bench and recently got a whole bunch of snow to water them, so I didn't have to. So here you go. Minnesota. April the 7th, very cold spring. Most of the Minnesota Bonsai Society members' trees are still frozen in the ground. So I put some plastic around some big uh, grape metal, you know, plant protectors right there. So I put some plastic around there and plastic up here, to secure it to my deck. And we did that to protect those guys in there. So you want to make sure that the wind and the harsh cold and wind of winter does not damage the trees. And uh, actually, the most damage from the wind is going to dry them out. Yes, in the middle of winter, they're drying out, so we protect them. So I created this barrier here so the winds wouldn't whip around here in the harsh, cold, windy days of winter. So we got some trees under here because the critters were getting at them right here. It's totally nice. Those are going to be um, some willow trees someday. They grow really fast. I got a red, uh, red branched dogwood. I got some white pine right there. Uh, I forget what this one is. Look, it's so chewed up from the critters, which is why I usually cover it up. Uh, that doesn't keep from the mice from getting it. There's a little uh, Scott pine right there and back there. Oh boy, I'm forgetting what that one's called. I gotta get my species all taken care of. So it's been protected from the wind so we don't dry out. We don't have any uh, extra moisture leaving the tips of these trees and any uh, foliage left on the uh, evergreens. And uh, the critters get at these quite, quite well. So you have to really secure them up. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put a cover on a couple of these. And uh, We'll let them finish sitting here because right now they continue to be frozen into the ground. So, until we can lose all this snow, there's not a whole lot we can do about it. So, let's head back inside and finish our nine bark. So as you can see, absolutely crazy weather this spring. It's just been long and cold and snowy. It's April 7th and it still looks like it's January and it feels like January. My cold frame is set about 40 degrees in the winter time and uh, this one uh, is one of my last to start budding out and I'm just ready to do a repot on it so, so here we go. We're going to have to take this thing out uh, of this pot after we untie 
or not untie, but untwist the wire, and uh, we'll see. So we have some washing to do from the pot, but there you go. Um, in my young bonsai career, that's probably one of the better bits of uh, roots that I've had growing on a young bone bonsai tree. So uh, I'm pretty excited about that. I'm going to be very gentle with this tree, as you'll maybe notice. I just spin it around. I got some of that bark to fall right off the tree. And I want to preserve as much of that as possible, let it fall off naturally, and uh, let Mother Nature take its course. Get some of these uh, roots good and going. So as you can, see, if you can see this, I don't know if you can or not, but a lot of roots growing right here on this side of the tree, and not as much on this side. So we'll have to investigate as to possibly why that is. We had some good growth on one side, not so much on the other. A lot of little roots in here. A lot of fine feeder roots, looking looking pretty nice. In the center there, you can still see some of the old uh, soil, a little bit of that original soil still in there. We're going to gently continue to get some of these rocks out of here. So I use my chopstick, more of a blunt instrument, uh, not as sharp. I'm um, going to poke through some holes in this, uh, what looks to be more like solid soil, a little bit less of the root division. Find a couple places that I can kind of poke through there and try to work through some of the soil here. I'm hearing some cracking along the way. You always want to be careful not to, to break a ton of roots. Of course, you're trying to preserve as many roots as possible. But at the same time, we're trying to break some of this up and open it up, and you're just going to get some residual damage, uh, collateral damage, if you will. Um, so we want to loosen it up. So I'm at the stage now when I repot my plants and have it to this stage where I can go and dunk it in my water back here and give it a little bath. So we're always trying to keep our bones like flat and wide out, kind of a semi-circle type of pattern if you will. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do some preliminary cutting of these roots just so I can get in there and see a little bit better. I know I'm not going to keep this long of a root to fit back in that tray. So we're going to be cutting some of these roots and just making this thing a little bit more reasonable to, to deal with. Certainly cutting them. I'll get more, more specific side-to-side uh, -side rotation, but some of this too is just sticking straight down from the center underneath. We'll be combing that out. Finding which one is which. The darker the root, the more root damage you have. If it's nice and lighter color, you know things are pretty healthy in most cases. All right. So I did when I brought this tree in first time a few days ago. I, I just did a couple of little bitty trims from what I already felt were either non-important branches or actually more so die back from the winter. So I had already had some pretty pretty uh, easy to see die back. So I took care of that first. And so it left me with this. Now I certainly could cut back some more branches, make it a little bit more tight, work on more ramification. But uh, this is my first year uh, in this new cold frame that I have. And so uh, I just wanted to see how much uh, growth I get this spring. I didn't want to cut too much off. Um, I might still cut a few more off to make more of my uh, kind of, you know, formal upright kind of broom style, actually. For me, one of the exciting parts about repotting is uh, discovering where your new nabari, how that new, uh, where, the, where the tree comes up from the soil, you want that taper to go like this. And to see where that is, how much lower can we go? How much exposed root can we have to make this tree look a little bit more old and mature? I've got a lot of these little roots tangled up up here, but it's hard to see on camera again. I'm doing my best to show you here. Right here, there's a, there's a, 
a, a nice root going this way, has nice movement. Now it goes up right here, so that might not look as good, but if I cut it right there, we see that root, more roots will go down and out from there. There's this big root in back that kind of curls around, might stick out just too much. And right now I got a, I got a root that's growing this way out and this way, and then it goes back down into the root system. So if I, I can slowly try to peel that out of there, you'll be able to get some uh, more radial pattern and ramification of these roots that are kind of a little all over the place right here. And some of these little ones on top, we can, if we break them off or cut them off, they're not going to be that big of a loss to us down the road. So here's for an example. This root right here is growing on a root that curves out from the base and it grows straight up and it was curved back in here underneath. I'm going to end up just cutting that thing off. It's not really going to be needed. And it's in a place that just doesn't uh, work for me right now. Cut that off and we'll just keep going. And that was holding some other branches in. So here's a close-up of the root system and as you can tell there's actually some nice big roots in there. You had no idea in the way it was in the pot before that this root system existed. Again, the one side had very little, uh, little uh, roots on that side, but the other side had a much better flow of roots. And as you can see, we got a nice root right here. That's a nice root going out. And this is a nice root going out, it comes way over here and down over there. And there's even a root right there. Still can't see the division of these two roots terribly well because there's still some dirt in there, but that's a root as well. So we got some nice root structure in there. We just have to figure out what to do with it all. We're going to keep plugging away. I love finding the new roots in here. Kind of like forcing spring, if you will. One of the things I love about spring so much is every day you walk outside and you see the new growth and you see how it changes and how it looks. And then through the growing season, everything is uh, shifting and moving around and growing. With the uh, repotting of a tree that's been in there for a year or two and sometimes three, um, you just don't know what's developed since you last looked at it. And it's been a while since I've seen this, so I don't even recall that, that this had the potential to have so many roots in there. So now comes the time where I pretty much have to start making some decisions now. I'm trying to get some of these more untangled. See, that one was just in there. It didn't need, it didn't, it didn't need to be there. All right. So, Real quickly, I'm going to show you, I have to wash off the pot that I just used if I'm going to use it again. But I was debating going with the same pot or this pot. Now this pot is smaller and already it will fit in there. Looks kind of good. My dilemma is this pot is kind of the color of the leaves. And so it's going to be the same color, although this makes the trunk pop a little bit more if I use this pot. If I decide to keep it in this pot, I don't know if you could tell earlier, but this pot has a side for the bonsai and a side for the little bit of a bird bath or a water there. And what I like about this pot, if I keep it in this pot, which it does fit in here quite nicely, that's why it's such a big pot, but it's a smaller set of roots. That fits nice. And if I do put it back in here like this with the root structure either this way or this way, what I envision doing is putting a tire string swing right here. So we'll see if we can get that mini Lego tire on a little rope right here and have a tire swing next to the water, which reminds me of rope swinging into the cabin. So we'll see how that works. Now, the reason why I like the backside so much is it has so many cool roots. Now, we don't want to have a root coming right out at you, right out toward the front, but if I were to get rid of this root, at least where it goes up high and we bury it a little bit, we might not see it if we tilt it this way a little bit. But we can maybe see these side roots here and here. I want to see this root on a flare, and eventually I want to see this root on a flare. This one we can maybe cut off, because and this one flares out right here too. So I got one, two, three, four roots. We get rid of this one right in the front, 
maybe we won't see that coming right at us and it might work out. So some of the things I have to think about. And the question is, do I put it over here with the water on the left this year? See, that is looking like a much, much better tree. And then I can put the tire swing right there. We can have it going. Last year I had it looking like, just like you were looking right there. So this year, maybe I'll do it this way. You can see this root coming off to the side. This one will develop. We'll cut this one off. And then the tire swing can be right over here that you swing into the water. Looks kind of fun if we do it that way. That fits in there much nicer there. Now I have to make a decision. This root right here. What to do. So as I have this, if I has as I have this in the tree right here, this is where it's going to be. A little bit back, a little bit over here. I think I want to have it over here as much as I can. Somewhere right about there. This one, this one right here comes right to you, and this one grows up as well. So I'm probably going to cut this one off right where it starts to go up right here. This one I can cut where it goes up first and then see how we're doing after that point. So I'm going to take a peek at that and see what I'm going to do here. Take a look under to make sure I'm not getting rid of too many. So the root right below this root right here, this one also goes up. I'm going to cut that one first because I don't think we need that growing up anymore. And we'll see how much root that gets rid of. Okay. So not too bad. Nice thick portion of there now gone. I ended up cutting through and cutting a second one too. I wasn't careful enough to look out for that one. But that one's sticking straight down. I have this sticking straight down right here, a really thick bulge. I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of just a little bit. And then where I cut that branch right there, excuse me, that root, where I cut that root, we'll get root growth going down. I'm going to change the angle a little bit so it grows down. And then here, so here I took this pretty big chunk of uh, root off right there. I still have one nice one going right there. That one can get some more uh, strength, and uh, we'll hope to bury that just a little bit. So that'll be buried. And then this other one that's coming up and curving way around, this has a lot of roots to it right here. Now I can bring it around and see right here I can bring that around and see if I could force it down but that big root in there I don't know I, don't know, I might want I don't know if I want to keep that one I think I want to get rid of that one too so we lost a couple of nice roots on there but not too terribly bad this is going to open up this area there's still some soil in there and tangled up mess there's even some styrofoam beads in there. If you can see some of those white dots in there that are falling out of there, that's styrofoam beads from the original pot it was in from the nursery. So I think that's gonna look like too nasty of a stump, so I'm gonna go ahead and just get rid of that one right in towards the tree. You see that one right in there? We got that one right in towards the tree. Now that will heal. The rocks will come right up to that surface right now. And then these other roots will get bigger, and then probably the next repotting will be able to lift this up even higher and see these roots. This one might have to go someday too, but because uh, there is one right below it. I don't know if I should get rid of that one this year or not. That might just stick up on, above the rock surface if I leave it where it is. But I've got some roots that can grow down now, so I might give it a... And if I tilt a little forward... I think I'll leave it there for now. The other one is this big gnarly thing right here. Curves around. 
don't know. It grows up and around. There's other roots tangled with it still. that's growing right out of the trunk here that there I'll just be able to peel that off there now it's yeah this is completely twisted around we're just gonna cut that at its twist point right there and I'm actually gonna cut a little bit deeper to get rid of that gnarl because it's just way too So I think I best stop right there. So we are ready to put everything in our pot, got it all cleaned out. We have our wire in there so I can put it back in. I'm going to get some of my larger rocks, put a little layer of larger rocks on the bottom, thin layer of larger rocks on the bottom so the water drains out at a better pace. So just, just a little row, a little row of the bigger lava and pumice. Okay. All right. So just enough to kind of cover one little layer. All right. Now that's going to sit down a little bit too low in there. So I'm going to want to mound up some. Um, I'm going to mound up some of the medium size that I have. So I'm just going to put that right in the center, about where we're going to put it. And we can always shimmy it down. So there's our mound. Now, there's the front. You're not going to be able to see as I do this kind of how I'm positioning it, but I want to position it a little bit more towards that side, not perfectly centered. Although it's not centered in the whole pot, I don't want it totally centered necessarily in the part where the tree is either. If I go and put it right about here, it's about what it's looking at like right now. I'm going to have a tire swing right over here. Gonna be kind of cool. Nice big tree. I also want to put a little bit more towards the back of where you're where I'm seeing it. I want to push this mound a little bit more to the back. There we go. And I think that is a good spot. Okay, so I have only two wires in here to secure it down, as opposed to four, which a lot of people like to have. I'm not going to go over the root this time. I think I'm going to try to go underneath the main front root. So I still have tangled roots up front here, so I don't know where... The wire is going to come through. Oh, there we go. So I'm hoping that over this back root is going to be fine. Now, I still may damage that root. That might be a root they want to save. So I'm going to go ahead and put on some tubing so I don't damage my root system in case I want to save them for the future. So I'm going to put this one on here. Get that down there where it's going to be protected. Put that one on here. So these two are going to come together somewhere around there. And I hope that it secures me from where I have to be. Okay, 
so at first glance, there's my tree. Go ahead and cut off the extra right now. Now I'll take a look at it. Twisting it just a little so I see a little bit more of the curve. So you'll notice when you're looking at this tree, one of the areas that uh, that we look at for the trunk is, you know, this is kind of a straight up kind of broom style tree, but it's always nice to see movement. So we've got a little bit of a bump here and this little bit of, you know, bump here. Um, some curvature here, some cur you know, so we don't want stick straight necessarily. And so there is a nice little indent right in here. All right, so in looking at the way the trunk is flowing now with the tree, what I like about this slight twist I made is we have good movement from the trunk up in here, up to where this goes, right in here. So always something you're looking for. Uh, it's a very, very beauty in the eye of a holder with bonsai. Uh, you gotta like it, gotta have some kind of movement, and I kinda like that. It's leaning slightly forward, which is where it needs to be, and it's relatively sturdy in there, just where it is now. Um, I don't think a strong wind is gonna do anything to that. So I'm going to give it one more twist, half a twist there, and shove this down into the rocks. And that is the placement of our tree. Now I am noticing it's a little bit more to the center than I hoped it would be. But again, it's to the left of the pot, we have the water, or right of the pot, and the water is going to be over here. I think that's all we're going to have. Now, before I put the rest of the rocks in here, I am going to cut a couple of, uh, of roots. So you can't see terribly well, but there's a root right here sticking straight up. I'm going to just trim some of the roots to see where they're coming from, where they're going. If it can be tucked down, it can be tucked down. I think I'll tuck that one down. Take out some roots that are just sitting in here. They don't know where to go. A little bit of cleanup before I add my final, my final soil to this guy. Some of these don't seem to be grown in the right direction, so we're just going to cut those off. All right, I think I'm good. We got our soil in there, as I was mentioning earlier. I don't have bamboo yet, still on the hunt for some bamboo. We want to make sure that we're taking our chopstick and we're getting these rocks to settle in there, especially underneath the center of this tree where there was no rocks before and we have a little bit of a curve underneath there where air could go in there. So we're packing down these rocks. get all the air out of here. We always want the good balance between air and moisture. We have a couple of roots that are sticking up. Then we'll put a few more rocks down here to hide some of those. We can always cut some of those off as well. So I think I can add a little bit more soil. Again, 50% pumice, 50% lava rocks, from the Minnesota Bonsai Society 2017 spring order. I still have some left. My order this year will be mostly for next year and anything I do this summer. All right, I think we have a pretty good level playing field. The water is going to roll into the pot, not out of the pot, so we have a little bit of a lip before the inside. Definitely a lip before this top part. Continue to work out some of those air bubbles. Things seem to be pretty tight down in there. I like that. I 
All right, so phase one of the repot, or maybe phase two or three by now, is uh, complete. So we have a nice looking nine bark. I didn't destroy too much of the bark here. Some of this is gonna come off naturally in the coming days, I would imagine, um, as it separates from the bark and dries up. It might blow off with the wind, with the elements. Um, so my old front was right here. This was what it looked like last year. And this year, I made this my new front. And though we cannot see too many of the, uh, the roots, there is that one right there on top that we actually, we snipped this one. We snipped this wood right there where that rock is. So hopefully that all heals and starts to grow down. That'll look like a nice root someday. And there's one right here, super hard to see by the camera. I can't tilt anymore, I'll lose all my rocks. Right there, there's a root going out. Got some nice little movement for future flare. We'll put some water in here and we'll get ourselves an inner tube and I'll be back when I go up and finish raiding the kids Lego world to find the tire that's gonna fit just perfectly. So I'll be back in a click. We've got the nine bark all set up with the tire swing. So I'm gonna give this a good watering and I've got water in there that I'll show you with a cutaway, but we'll give it a good watering Get all those roots ready to go. We'll give you an update on this thing uh, in a few uh, months, a few weeks or a few months, let you know how things are going. We'll see if we uh, can find any little people to go off the rope swing. For Dave's Bones, I am Dave Weiss. Hope you enjoyed the episode. And we'll catch you on the next one. If you like the channel, go ahead and do that. Tell all your friends to subscribe. and appreciate it. And... Uh, We'll get going on some more trees very soon. We'll see you next time.